Welcome everyone to IEEE's Northern Australia's Tech Talk series. So Ron's kindly volunteered to do, actually you're our first Tech Talk, I think, Ron, in the, in the short talk series. We've had a few backyard inventions, but Ron's going to be um, giving us a presentation on green nurdle testing from an engineering perspective. And Ron's been an IEEE member for just about 30 years, or just shy of 30 years, which is phenomenal. Done all sorts of things from maintaining aircraft systems in the military to marine electronics to teaching kids maths and physics, as well as um, also teaching at TAFE in the vocational education sector. So he's got an engineering degree and graduate diploma in education from JCU and had an interest in the sea since sailing from Sydney to Townsville during the bicentennial year of 1988. So Ron's always maintained an association with the salt water with his personal projects. If you ever get a chance, ask Ron, he'll just got come up with some phenomenal inventions there. And he's also been a, a skipper and technical advisor with the JCU Turtle Health um, team for a period of several years. So today, as I mentioned before, John, um, Ron will be talking about green turtle nesting. It's my privilege to introduce um, someone with such a, a caliber in the marine science field. So I'm from Ames and Ron's also our Oceanic Engineering Society lead for IEEE Northern Australia. So thanks very much, Ron, and I'm really looking forward to your talk. Thank you very much, Melanie. Welcome, everybody. Um, so hopefully I'll try and keep it to around about the 10 minutes and just give you a little bit of an engineering flavour on how um, we had to look at some turtles there a few years back. So uh, just as a, a bit of a background, the, they start off as a hatchling. So on the top left-hand side of the screen, um, they're around about five centimetres. And once they're hatched, they do like a little wind-up toy um, action with their arms. So they go sort of left, right, left, right, left, right with their front flippers and crawl over the ground to reach uh, the sea often towards the light. Once they reach the water, uh, they're into the full-on breaststroke then and they, their little flippers are just like underwater wings and um, off they take. They're an absolute underwater creature. They're only ungainly on the ground and they're um, just absolutely beautiful in the water. After that, the, um, they head off to sea for um, some unknown periods of time, but around about the, uh, the 15 years or so, um, then they come back to shore uh, I don't know, but I imagine that it's probably because they're starting to become um, dinner plate size and they're probably um, becoming a bit of a, a meal for some of the larger ocean predators. So uh, after they've done that, they come into close to shore and they sort of seem to stay in the same area for quite a while. Um, they're sedentary, as it sort of says there. And so they are vulnerable and they're um, vulnerable to maybe a dirty environment if that's where they're staying. So um, uh, hello to Dr. Karina Jones there, who's holding a juvenile turtle. The green turtles have um, the four scales right behind their eyes. If we pop down to the subadult, bottom right hand side, uh, we can see clearly the one, two, three, four scales behind the eye. And um, that's, the, that's the mark of the, pretty well the green turtle. Uh, under their subadult, size, they then move over to being an adult. The, um, the males have a very long tail. And so um, you have to be a, a, a bio trained person to, to know the difference um, other than that long tail to determine whether they're male or females. The, um, the adults then, I'm not quite sure their age, but um, they then make their way when they're, they're fully grown and reproducing they make their way back to where they were born pretty well. And um, the ones that we looked at were the ones that were at Rain Island. And Rain Island is the, um, the largest green turtle rookery in the world. And uh, during the day, we have a little picture up on the top left hand side. But what I'm talking about tonight is that um, in the engineering sense, a stable population, words like set point, a negative feedback. Um, what does that sort of mean? Well, basically, if you have a low input to a stable, um, a stable process with negative feedback, you will often um, increase your output. And then, of course, when you go above the set point um, and you start having too high an input, then uh, the process puts in a negative feedback and you have a low output. I've put the question there, uh, many females with a question mark, 
when I show you the, the summary view of all of the um, full season of the turtles in the hatchings and such, uh, then we we'll sort of see that there'll be a, a hot temperature period when the majority are hatched and probably a cooler temperature period where the majority are hatched. And so um, turtles, of course, are temperature dependent in terms of um, whether they'll become a male or a female. And so we'll look at that as we get down the slides. So beautiful Rain Island. Um, this is my photo here. I took that from the beach. Um, it has a very large bird population as well. It's a very small island. It has around about two kilometres or, or 1.8 kilometres of beach all the way around the island. And, and that beach nesting area is about 60 metres deep. So if you want to imagine what that is like in Townsville, that's the same as going from the rock pool to the um, marina where the, where the yachts are. And that's about two kilometres long in the same, same distance, about 60 metres deep. So that's what's happening in the, in the um, top left hand side is what happens during the day. Beautiful, isn't it? It seems to be a nice, um, nice sloping sand beach with the birds around and turquoise blue and dark blue areas. Because remember, it's actually not in the reef area. It's about four or five kilometers beyond the fringing reef and is, um, has 300 meters deep water all the way around the island. And, um, and so it's actually more like a little tiny seamount, I suppose. At night time, the picture that we're seeing there is sort of not a raisin cake at all. What it is, is in 2006, um, uh, Paul Gard did some research on determining the water table and the sand um, contour on that island. And they used all of the uh, nautical information like mean low tides and uh, lowest astronomical tide and such. Um, but I was really lucky. I, I got data and information from a group of researchers who were already doing the research and I just piggybacked the information and the data, which was kindly given to me um, from some Queensland surveyors. So they use what's called the UTM coordinate system and, the, um, and they use the AHD, which is the Australian height datum. Now the Australian height datum is easy to think about because it's just the, the zero point um, sea level basically, which just changes every couple of years due to the moon. Now, if we look down there, um, we use this photo to determine, well, not all turtles are nesting. Um, some are digging a hole for sure. Um, other ones that seem to be just passing through or trying to find a spot. But I sort of use that and we'll see in the last slide um, as some sort of a guide and a distribution for numbers of turtles on the beach compared to a number of turtles uh, actually nesting. Moving to the third slide along, uh, the, the DGPS information there, that's a differential GPS. So these Queensland surveyors have got a, well, the, the Queensland surveying group has got a surveyor mark on the island and um, the DGPS is the differential GPS, which maintains a very uh, precise measurement at a high accuracy. And they can even see the movement of the islands and the continents over time now, because um, you know, we move like seven centimeters a year towards the equator, Australia does pretty well. Now, just looking at that third photo, there's a, um, it's the pale island outline is from 2300 steps that the surveyors did when they just sort of walked around the island randomly. And then um, I just, I massaged that data and did a bit with it, but that's not the talk tonight. But what I did do was um, make a picture of the island on top of that island or overlaying it with a separate um, uh, piece of software, same software, but a, a different command. You can see all of the little tiny blue dots everywhere next to that 50 meter times 50 meter um, arrow pointing to that area. So that area is just a small group of 320 odd um, nests that a group of researchers went and precisely found while the turtles were nesting and then um, took a differential GPS of the actual nest position so that the researchers could come and check them out 
um, in February. So that's the overlay of those nests. And then um, I'll show you that on a, on a completely um, bare overlay soon. Then to what I did. So this is one season, 235 days. So the turtles are actually nesting on Rain Island for around about um, the 235 days, so well over six months. Um, if you look closely, it's a bit hard to see, but there's holes, there's little circles. They're actually not coloured, and there's a whole lot of circles that are coloured. And I wrote an algorithm to um, basically uh, see how the nesting turtles interacted or disturbed or not. The, the nests that were laid previously. So it looks like a, it reminds me of a, one of those jelly jars where you have to, the jelly bean jars, where you have to guess how many um, turtles are in a 50 by 50 metre square. <laughs> That's the, this one can cheat. It says there's 7,000 holes dug in a season in one 50 metre by 50 metre square at one time. And um, we'll just move on to the next slide. So with automatic control, you know, you will have an input. So the red left-hand side there is an input. Um, there's a process uh, and there's an output. Hopefully the input is turtles nesting. Uh, the output is how many uh, nests are laid and how many turtles actually hatch from a result of that. Now with the process, tongue in cheek here, and no one knows. <laughs> uh, basically, I've got it compared with Heron Island, which is our southern barrier reef um, nesting area, and they may have 40 turtles per night and stuff like that. So nothing much happens in our season before December, and nothing much happens after February. So the general um, idea of what the process could be of the turtles coming to the island and laying is a little bit like a rectangular distribution and um, uh, a lot come and then there's none. So what I did is I used MATLAB, uh, I put everything into 3D and then I just basically threw a random group of turtles with a distribution um, that's, that sort of I picked up from the literature and had a look at what happened. The peak nightly tally, the input, just going to the next slide, um, at first glance, this slide is really deceiving. It's not meant to show the numbers of turtles per night or per season or anything like that. The main reason for this, um, for this graph is that it was to see um, whether the turtles followed the Southern Oscillation Index or not. And so um, Limpus, Cole Limpus and, and people in his area, um, we're looking at the relationship between basically temperature, I suppose, and the turtles coming and going, both the northern and southern rookery areas. But let's have a look at it a little bit more closely. Uh, the black one is Heron Island. So that's a small island um, uh, south of, of Bundaberg. Um, and Rain Island is the red one. On the right-hand scale, it's the Heron Island tag turtles. So I'm not sure, but I'm imagining that's nearly all the turtles in the full season that came to Heron Island. So you can see, we'll pick one year here, um, 2006. So in two, 2006, we had um, the black ones, they had around about 1,700 turtles, all up for the whole season on Heron Island. That same year, and that's 2006, and that's the same as that um, second, picture of all the turtles that looks like a current cake that's there um, in 2006. So up here we've got a red mark and it lines up with the 14,000. Now that's not 14,000 per season, that's 14,000 in one night in the middle of December. And so um, the literature has got these fantastic records of the peak nightly tally, which is a single figure saying um, the average peak value of turtles that were on the beach in one night in December on Rain Island. So there's a little bit difference between 14,000 in one night and um, 1,700 for the season. So going to the next 
slide, I had to get that, um, that single number and work out how that was going to be split up for a full season. Um, Bramble Cay is very close to the Rain Island area and is sort of considered um, a very similar process happening on there, but a much smaller scale. What we can see here, is we've got two marks, we've got all the, green, all the green figures in the graph. And I just manually typed all those values in from a graph of um, arrivals and departures over a full season on Bramble Cay. And they had a maximum of 500 turtles um, uh, per night uh, in that you can sort of see against the side. So what I did that, I just used the MATLAB splining function um, and I did a spline on that data and it gave a really nice little blue curve underneath. It was a ninth order, um, it was a ninth order polynomial to give that splining curve. Um, and I just cleaned up the edges after the season and before the season so that we didn't get negative numbers and things like that. Uh, if you look at it closely, it looks very similar to a one minus cos curve and it pretty well loosely aligns with the temperature curve for the year. So um, moving over to the next part of the slide, uh, I've got one year there with 13,800 tally. That was that mid-December night in 2006 with that picture of the turtles. From that, we split that, that picture up and um, broke it down into an area and worked out that um, basically 34% of all of those turtles on that picture were nesting and everyone else was either traveling through or trying to find a nest. And so um, if we look at that, there was 13,800 on the island, but we could pretty well say that as a, as a first order guess, the um, only 34% are nesting. So that was the number used to um, determine who's laying eggs and who's not. So from that one, we go to the bottom left hand side and that's that open uh, picture of the full island. It has a vertically exaggerated scale on the left hand side to three meters because on the island, it's not a nice, flat little beach where the turtles can happily zoom down to the water and swim away. It's actually a series of mountains and crests and, um, and is very difficult for the turtles to traverse and has a three meter variation. And so of course, because all of the nests were taken with respect to the Australian height datum at the zero point, then um, there was actually a three meter variation between the turtles, not so much the depth that they dig into the ground, but the, um, the, the undulation of the beach is implicit in that, um, in that variation in the data for there. So we've got one, two, three, four main areas that they had on the island. And I concentrated the sample space, a 50 meter by 50 meter um, area that is three meters deep, just at this point, um, with all of the jelly bean jar pictures again. So from there, we had a, a, I just put it, good thing with MATLAB is you can do all the display and the data manipulation in three dimensionals, uh, but then you can just go and select the XY scale and um, you can have just a, a view down from that. So I did that and I, I left everything out except for the actual blue eggs that were there. So the blue eggs, are now all of these eggs looking down from the top and basically just doing a, a sample run with these values for um, just for the season. And you can see most of the, of the original ones, the blue ones that were in this area, have all been hit um, with the simulation. So um, if the data found another three dimensional point, it just colored the circle in. If it didn't, the circle stayed uncolored. And so basically on those, if 60 nests that were there, 404 hits on those 60 nests. So um, you could probably make some sort of an assumption about that in terms of whether the clutches of eggs are in, in danger of being hit by nesting turtles. So I had the sample space and um, 
we had the peak nightly tally, put it into a process. Um, I'll just very quickly go to the PDF document of that process. And I broke it up into two runs, um, a 40 a night to 2,340 per night, mid season for the input on a peak nightly tally. Um, and then I did a second run, which is more akin to Rain Island of 2,300 to 23,000 turtles on the island per night on the peak nightly tally. Remembering this is a, a space that is two kilometers long and 60 meters deep. I just broke it up into about 43 equal 50 by 50 meter sample areas. And then what happened in one sample area, I just extrapolated out, multiplying it by 43 for the whole island. So the output of this process was the nests laid, the, um, the amount of nests that were dug up, that's an assumption that they, they, uh, there was a three dimensional hit on all of the eggs that were there beforehand and how many were then hatched from the end of that. So going to the PDF of the first one, this is just showing you that I did actually write code for this. So it wasn't a graphical interface. You had to, you had to write the code. Um, I showed off, uh, luckily I wrote a lot of good, um, a lot of good REM notes to myself because I could go back and find out what I'd actually done. I was a bit clever with myself halfway through and I did what's um, called vectorizing the code with MATLAB. And basically you just put a whole lot of brackets and colons and semicolons and commas. And then before you know it, you've just done um, a whole lot of for loops and, um, and things like that and loaded up matrices. So I only did that to be clever just so just because I could at the time be unusual if I could do it right now because you really have to be up to speed with MATLAB to spatially think about all of those um, relationships in scalars and three-dimensional vectors. So moving down to some pictures. So basically what this picture shows, and I'll just zoom in on this now, so I'll just raise it to the, so we can see it a little bit easier. So what I've done is that, uh, what this is, all is, is this. So on the bottom half of the graph, it's a 50 by 50 meter sample area. And the blue is that nothing happens until basically December. And then you have so many turtles per night. And then, um, and then 55 days later, because that's pretty well the, um, the incubation period, you then have almost an identical hatchling set pattern. And basically very few, the green, very few are dug up and the green indicates the dug up. Once I did that and got those numbers, I then post processed the results and went up to the top graph. And this top graph represents the probability that when laid, that, that clutch had a chance of survival. So you can sort of see from here that majority of the clutches that were laid, when they were laid, had a 100% chance of probably not getting dug up with there. So that's, that's what you would see all around the world. It's a bit hard to see um, the, the proper distribution. That's probably why many people think that it's a rectangular distribution, because that's pretty well what happens um, throughout the world. Just going down now, I'll bring this back to 66%, so it looks nice. As we go down, um, you can see the numbers are getting bigger. And on the bottom graph, we're starting to get um, that bit of a shape of the, of the turtles nesting. So these are turtles nesting, the bottom left-hand blue curve. Um, you then have the green ones where they're the turtles getting dug up, just randomly um, throwing the blue ones onto the beach in that sample area. And then if they hit the same area or shallower or, or deeper than the ones that are already there, then it's considered a hit. And then um, if there's been no hits, whatever data was in the uh, three dimensional matrix that I had uh, stayed a number, then that number, because it wasn't zero, uh, must have hatched. So then you can see it's a very similar um, idea. You have all the turtles in the blue lane. 55 days later, you have a very similar shape of what got laid being hatched on the island. Now, uh, a guy called Nighthammer and Balatz in, in the 90s had to do almost a single, a single slit experiment on this 
um, because the island that they checked to find some sort of a distribution of the arrival and departure over a full season was so minimal that it took them six years to get enough data over the full um, uh, nesting season before they got a shape starting to appear. Up until then, it was just a random set of um, blobs. And so um, that shape is very similar to this shape. And so it gives me confidence to say that, well, it's probably doing that sort of a thing. Now, let's have a look at up this, um, the expected survival from when they're laid. When they first arrive with these small numbers, remembering what are we looking at here? We're looking at um, 400 a night. So that's already exceeded most of the, most of the um, rookeries in the world, but it hasn't even touched the beginning of Rain Island's turtles. So you can see already that um, the early arrivers were most probably okay when they got laid, but then once the population started to arrive, the, um, the chances of being dug up were starting to get pretty high. And at the end of the season, you can see that um, their chances of being laid and hatched and not being dug up were relatively high. If you squint your eyes and do a, um, <laughs> and do a correlation, not even a correlation curve, but if you squint your eyes and do a mean average of all of that, probably around about here, we're getting to um, uh, 50, 60% success, probably more in the 80%. In the literature, and we'll see it as we move to the other populations now, I'll just move down a bit. In the literature, there's a number 85% in April that has um, made it into the literature and is always used as the well, five years ago it was anyway. It's always used as the standard. If it's not getting 85%, then there's something going down. So just looking at a few more numbers up here, and um, the beginnings and the ends are okay, but you can see the group of turtles in the middle are starting to have little success of getting through, but they're still 50, 60%, that's fine. We're up to 700 turtles a night. So do a few more, and you can sort of start to see that um, we're up to only 1,700 turtles per night on the island. And um, already uh, there's a chance of a whole lot of the turtles that are laying, the blue line on the bottom, are now digging up this many of the greens. And um, the reds are what didn't get hit and they hatched after their 55 days. So you can see here that um, already you're getting a major population still 55 days later, and it's still in the middle, and it sort of follows the shape of the, um, of the laying. So just going to the end of this run, which is popping all the way through, and you can still see in April, um, so April, so May is uh, 215, and so 150, so 180 is April, so 150, about 180 there. So around this area, you're still looking at 85%. So no wonder the 85% in April is in the literature and that's the standard because that's the only one that doesn't change, it seems. So moving down, that's the end. So that's 2,300 turtles in one night. I just need to close the PDF off and I'll go back and have to go from the current slide. So I'm just gonna oh, make sure I close the right one. Yep, so what have we got on the screen? Oh good, we're still, we're still okay. I'm now going to move to the peak nightly tally. And what we're looking at there is the 2,300 to 23,000. So I'll race to that one straight away. You saw the pattern. Recently, what was going through the system was um, 23,000 per night in 2014 when, um, when we were there doing our stuff. And basically what we're looking at with uh, 23,000 per night is that uh, the turtles come ashore. These are all the ones that are nesting, that could be nesting. And then um, they seem to interact with each other. I put in a, an equation to make that interaction happen. And then um, they're digging up quite a few of them. And the majority of the turtles are well after the season is gone that are, that are hatching. And you can see here that the probability of success is around about the 20% mark. Um, but once again, back in April, we have our 85%.
So that interaction that I sort of looked at there, basically I went from a constant at 0.34 we're talking about, and that's just, um, that's just the interaction of each of the turtles on the beach of a night time. And so I tried a, a constant, a unity, a linear, and an exponential. Uh, for the engineers, interestingly, um, it's a low pass filter, so it's more or less like an integrator. Um, if we put a linear, a y equals mx going in, then of course we'll get a quadratic um, shape uh, showing up in that. So when we do that, I'll just have a quick look. Now I didn't actually, there we go. So I'll just bring that up to a slightly bigger. I didn't, um, this is just the process happening and the interaction between the turtles of a night time um, are a linear relationship. And you can sort of see here that over a period of numbers, the bottom scale is how many nightly tallies there are. So when there's 2,300 um, turtles in the night time, most are dug up. But if you look along the bottom, it seems like there's a regular set point of no matter what the population is, you will always get these um, about three to 10 million turtles output from the island. So that's the linear input. Um, what I did is I just put a linear interaction between the turtles on the beach and whether they nested or not. When there's lots of turtles, you can see the interaction was so great with the linear equation that, um, that basically none were, none were nesting at all in the middle of the season because there were just uh, too many of them. Closing that off, uh, I went with the exponential one in the end. And the exponential one, um, if you put that through the integrator, of course, the only thing that stays the same in an integration is, a, is an exponential. And so what happens here is it's uh, stabilizing at probably an island saturation level. Once again, the three million or so, three to 10 million um, hatchlings per season are possible. Shows up very strongly that most of the turtles on the large populations are hatching well into well past the end of the season and so it's much cooler there so we could probably assume that when there is an overabundance of females perhaps it's a large amount of males that are that are hatching um, from the island so that's pretty well uh the story and thank you any questions that's my wonderful grandson and my son and one of our boats. <laughs>